G'day guys, welcome to Dan's Model Bench and the first video I'm putting up for 2022. I've got a couple more in the pipeline, I've got to edit, but this one's going to be the first. Um, you can see I'm in the process of building a uh, Panther kit, this is ICM's Panther D. Um, I'm just doing the link tracks, which is the first ones I've ever done, and um, yeah, anyway. But there's lots of gluing going on, obviously, to get those tracks in place. And that got me thinking about doing a short video to talk a little bit about the glues that I use. Because um, I guess like a lot of modelers, when I got back into this hobby, uh, the, the sort of default glue a lot of folks were using was the Tamiya Extra Thin, which is a perfectly fine glue and it works really well. And I used it on a number of builds as well, including ones that are up on this channel. But since then, I have actually changed my practices with glue. It's got a little bit more involved and I thought... Yeah, it might be worth just having a video to talk about what glues I use and why, and maybe you'll find that of interest um, in your builds. So I'll put the Panther aside for a sec, and we'll just have a talk about those glue bottles you can see just behind it, or what were behind it. So starting off, um, why did I replace Tamir Extra Thin? What was wrong with it? Nothing really. I think it's an excellent all-round glue. Um, it does a lot of things very well, and... Um, if that's the only glue you've got and you're happy with it, there's no reason to change. But I, I did find it was a little bit compromised in doing some things. So, for example, it tended to evaporate a little too quickly for some projects. It could, in some circumstances, uh, be a little bit harder to get the glue, uh, the glue to flow uh, where I wanted it to go. So I sort of thought, well, what the heck? And so what I did is I bought a bottle of this, which is Mr. Cement S. And... I bought this as a substitute for the Tamiya Extra Thin. I thought, I'll just try another brand, see what it's like, because this is a quite reputable brand, just like Tamiya. And I found this glue to be fantastic. I like the applicator more. The fact that you've got this long handle suits me better with my hands as far as holding it's concerned. Um, it doesn't have quite the fancier feature in the Tamiya Extra Thin where you can extend the brush, but you can actually pull these bristles out if you need to make it longer. Um, the glue itself comes in a very similar package, obviously, a similar sort of glass bottle. And what I found with it, though, was it uh, is much better with capillary action. That is where you're holding two parts together and then you run the, the brush along the seam. This glue works brilliantly uh, when it comes to that kind of application. And in my opinion, better than what uh, the Tamiya Extra Thin does. So I started finding myself using it a little bit for those kind of applications where I'm gluing wing halves together, top and lower turrets together and tanks, that kind of thing. And what I found over time was I was using this more and more and more and I was using it to me less and less. So eventually I just made the decision to swap across to this and this has become my default glue for most scenarios. But of course you would have noticed that I've got all these other glues as well. So why have I got more than just the one? This one here, which is Mr. Cement SP, and I'll be the first to admit that um, this company does make very confusing uh, names for products. So to explain it basically, these are very similar types of glues, except this one um, will glue things faster. Uh, so it's much more suited for gluing, say, small parts like um, you know, turrets, uh, putting handles on turrets and things like that on tanks. You know, putting cockpits together in aircraft, that kind of thing, maybe small pieces on a ship. If you need things to tack very quickly and stay in place, this is a better glue than this. This will, won't do that quite as well. Uh, it's also a stronger glue. So while you can use it the same way you can with Mr. Cement S, if you uh, put too much on, there's a possibility you could melt the plastic a little bit, mark the plastic. Um, and also, if it gets onto paint, it's this one tends to be okay with paint. It doesn't uh, yeah, if you're only using little mounts, it won't um, overly, um, it won't damage the paint, finishes what I'm trying to say. So Mr. Cement SP, however, if you put too much on, does tend to make uh, most paints bubble a little bit. So it is obviously a hotter glue than the Mr. Cement S, although its behaviour is fairly similar. Not quite as good with the capillary action. This is probably in some respects closer to Tamiya Extra Thin, except it's stronger. So, the, so I do find my uses that night. When I first got this bottle, I thought, oh, I'm not going to use that very much. I use it all the time. It's fantastic. If you're an armour modeler and you're doing all those small detail parts on your tanks, uh, this is great glue for that. The next one along was when I got, just because I was curious about it, this is the Ammo MIG Extra Thin Cement. And again, I thought, well, you know, 
I probably won't use it very often, and but yes, I do. This one is a must, in my opinion, if you're an armor modeler or you do very small detail kits in smaller scales. And I would think a lot of ship modelers too would find this one really useful. So the things I like about this one. The first thing is the applicator itself. I don't know if we can see that very clearly. I'll try and put something behind it. I just put this blue behind it so you can see it a bit clearer. So you can see it's got a very fine tip. Just put that in comparison with a standard sort of glue bottle. So you can see the difference. So there's your sort of standard glue tip there. And let's have a look at this one. You can see it's much finer point on it. This point and this glue, in my opinion, has been really set up from people like armor modelers. Um, it's a really good glue. It allows you to um, obviously put a very controlled amount of glue onto a surface, particularly handy when you're working with small parts. And it tacks really quickly, which is to say that if you've got you know, a control column in an aircraft, um, you know, a, a headlight you're trying to put on a truck or a tank or something, and you need it to hold in place um, fairly quickly, pop a bit of this on there, a couple of seconds, let go, and it won't move. It'll, it'll stay there and harden from that point on. It's a fantastic glue for small parts. So if you're doing armor models or, or small scale kits, I would highly recommend you get a bottle of this and try it out and see what you think. Um, the downside to this glue, it's probably twofold. The first one is that it's extremely smelly. And I know I can't sort of uh, explain that particularly well on uh, video, but it, it is by far the strongest smelling glue that I've got. Um, so even when I use small quantities of it, you can tell I've used it if you walk in the room. Uh, the other disadvantage of this glue, in my opinion, is just the, the bottle it comes in. It's quite tall and quite narrow in the base. So, you know, we talk about the risk of spilling glues and we say these might be a risk. Well, you can see this has got actually a much narrower base, so the risk of you spilling this is a much greater. And I have already actually spilt some of this glue um, already. So that's the downside. But we can work around that, and I'll talk about that in a bit towards the end of the video. But for small detail parts where you want them to tack really quickly and stay in place and not just start to move or, you know, whatever, fantastic glue. Highly recommend it. Okay. Now, the last glue I had in my stash originally uh, was this one which is Rebels Contactor Professional. I've bought this, um, this is a new bottle. I've got a couple of used bottles. This was the first glue I used when I got back in the hobby. So my very first kits on YouTube were, were done with this glue. And I have had no problem with it. I've, I've read a couple of people having problems with it being a little too hot and melting parts. That wasn't a problem for me. It just was more cumbersome to apply it in most situations than a brush type glue. Um, but that wasn't the problem. The problem I had with it is as the bottles uh, get used and the uh, the glue starts to get older, I guess, is, um, I'll just take the lid off this one, is this fine applicator tip, which it works really well, but it would get clogged constantly. And I was finding myself constantly having to clean it off or try and put something down to clean it. I ended up using actually a, um, uh, a match to, and it actually works really well, it actually burns the glue inside it out and cleans it up again. But that was my biggest problem with it. The glue itself has been fine. How I use it these days, or how I was using it, uh, basically was to tack parts together. So if I was putting two parts of a 148th scale aircraft wing together, I would put a bit of this around some of the places where the wings join, just to hold them into place. And then I'd come back over the joins with something like this and finish off the, um, the gluing. So I kind of use it as a glue to hold things in place until I could get to them with another glue application. And that worked really well. Um, no problems at all. Um, I also used it for things like um, undercarriages and things like that when I'm putting them into wheel wells. Um, I just found that having to constantly deal with the clogging issue in this was the thing that I found really irritating. So what I did to resolve that was I bought a bottle of this, which is to me is cement. This is the original to me, a cement. This is what uh, those of us who have been around long enough will remember was basically the first product that like this that appeared in the shops for a lot of us, and at least here in Australia, and I'm sure from around the world, to me it was a pretty early adopted of these sort of liquid cements in the bottle. And the main characteristic about this particular glue is it's much, much thicker than the other glues, and you can see the applicator itself is also a lot thicker as well. Um, this is a great glue for large areas. It's, um, it can basically do all the sorts of things that this glue did. 
only it's easier to control because you've got a bottle and you don't have to worry about it clogging up, obviously. Um, you don't want to use a lot of it, so typically when I go to use it, I'll actually do this just to get rid of the excess of the brush because a little bit of this will go a long way. And this has by far the longest drying time of any of those glues that we've just been talking about. So if I want something to uh, be able to be repositioned and moved around uh, over an extended period while I'm trying to line things up correctly, this is the glue I will use. If I'm looking to just tack things together so I can come back with perhaps another glue and do the edges and sort of finish off the job, again, this is the glue I use. And it's effectively taken the place in my glue stash of, uh, from the contacted professional. I probably will still end up using that from time to time just because the applicator sometimes is handy to have. But most of the time now I'm finding myself using the Tamiya cement. So in my latest build, using the Panther, <coughs> I use that to actually glue all the road wheels. These don't have any, um, like, this is an ICM kit, so it doesn't have any of those nice little, um, I don't know what you call them, those little vinyl sort of attachments that Tamiya tank kits have. That you can you can hold the wheels on with so you have to actually glue these ones on so i use that because it was a nice glue it gave me time to position the wheels and line them up properly and then i could just let it set overnight and i was good to go the next day with it so that's been working quite well for me and that basically is my stash of glues and i find myself these days now i'm comfortable with how these glues work and the properties that they have I find myself using all four of these glues on pretty much every single build that I do. And I'm aware it's a very, um, it's a bit of a luxury, you know, it's a bit of a first world thing. But if you have opportunity, maybe you're putting an order in for something or you're down your local hobby shop, you might want to try them out. Just grab a bottle and see what you think of it. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't work for you, go back to, your, to what you're used to, which for a lot of folks is to me are extra thin. I could very easily take that out of the mix and put Tamiya Extra Thin there if I wanted to. That wouldn't worry me too much. I just happen to like the way that this one, the capillary action of this one, has really won me over. It works really well. Uh, and you can see, however, I've got an extra glue in the back there that obviously is just peeking over the top. And that also has just recently added into my stash and I'm quite pleased with it. And to explain what it does, it's what I'm using at the moment for these tracks. So these tracks are all these um, sort of single link things. You put them together and make up the track. I've never done that before. It's quite scary, intimidating. I have no idea whether the ICM kits tracks are atypical of this sort of um, method of doing things or they're a little bit better or worse. I don't know. I really have had a hard time with it. Um, it's not intuitive to me. So I wanted to have a glue that was going to give me some time to fix things. So if I make a mistake... I can undo it, and also something that's going to allow me to sort of, you know, do these tricky bits going around wheels and things like that, like the rollers and stuff like that. So uh, one of the brands that I have been using a bit, uh, using their products quite a bit actually, uh, particularly for their weathering and pigments and things, is a company called VMS out of Europe. I think they might be out of Poland, I think, from memory. I'll put that up on the video. Anyway. Getting back to what we're talking about, this is a styrene cement. They do make a variety of them. I've also got a fast version, which is, uh, I've put it in an old bottle here, but this is almost like, to me, extra thin, basically. <laughs> it's pretty much what it is. Um, and I've got this one, which is their slow. So this actually gives me up to an hour's drying time. So it, it's very tacky. So when I put that on the track parts, it actually gives me uh, some time. So I'll put that on the track parts, leave the track parts for a few minutes to start setting. And then I can pick them up as one and I can start wrapping them around the, the drive wheels and things like that um, without any problems. And they'll, then they'll stay together. So this is a fantastic glue for doing those sort of link uh, type tracks. And that's really what I think it's been designed for. But anywhere where you want a cement that will bond together but will give you a long working time, this will work. Unfortunately, um, the glue doesn't come in bottles like this with a brush applicator. That's not VMS's way. They're not particularly keen on that approach. They say just use um, a paintbrush. So I've been using this older Tamiya paintbrush, which has been working fine. Washing that out with just a heavy duty sort of um, cleaner, airbrush cleaner. And that gets rid of the, the remaining glue out of the bristles and keeps them, keeps them fresh. And this stuff works really, really well. So that's now been added to my 
list of glues where I want a slow setting glue and specifically for tank tracks that's really what I'm using it for so there you have my now collections I've replaced my Tamiya Extra Thin with what uh, five glues effectively but they all have their special applications and they're quite good um, I would strongly recommend if you have the opportunity and you've got the funds to do so that maybe you look at exploring some of these glues yourself if you've got them at your local hobby shop or wherever you get your mail orders from because I do actually think they have an application I'm aware they're a little bit self-indulgent having in as many different glues but they do all have quite unique characteristics and as you get more comfortable and confident with what they do it is actually quite handy being able to change the way you work with the model by selecting the glue that's the most appropriate for the type of um, application you're trying to um, to do with your construction. So they're very handy. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy with all of these. So that, you know, even though we've got uh, three different brands here, well, we've got one, two, three, no, four different brands, sorry. I'm happy with all of these glues, so I can recommend any of them to you. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with the Rebel Contactor either. If you use that and you're happy with that and it doesn't clog for you, that's great. That's a great glue too. And certainly could be a replacement for the Tamiya one. That's all for this one, guys. I hope that was useful. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.